Number six has to do with a hotel cost or a hotel bill. Number six says they spent $86 on the room for the night. So $86. Okay. It says the final bill came up to $91.44. So that means that the cost here is going to have to equal $91.44. Okay. So it also says that that bill included a soft drink for $2. So we have to add on $2. Somebody got thirsty. Okay. It says to determine the tax rate for the room. Just for the room. So how do we do tax? Tax is the percent of the cost. Okay. So again, percent of cost. So we need to find out something times the cost and in this case it's the cost of the room. <clears throat> so we're gonna have to stick this X times the cost of the room up into this equation here to add it together because if I have $86 plus $2 that's not going to give us $91.44 so that means that the tax has to be added on to the bill okay so we're going to have $86 plus $2 plus X times 86 or the other way we can write that is 86x because again most of the time the number goes first and the variable goes second and that's going to give us 91.44 okay so this is the cost of the room cost of the soda this is the tax that will be added on to it again tax is a percent of the cost we don't know what the percent is so we're representing that with x so on your test you would say x equals the tax, okay, the percent that we're looking for. So is the left hand side simplified? And the answer to that is no. We need to add the 86 and the 80 and the 2 together to get 88 plus 86x equals 91.44. Okay, is the right hand side simplified? Yes. Any parentheses? No. So what happened to x first? This happened first, this happened second, so I'm going to subtract the 88 from both sides, making sure that you line up the decimals correctly. Again, this is not 88 cents, so I don't want to see any 88s right here. $88 has a decimal, 0, .00. Subtract. Okay. So $3.44, I still have my 86x on my left hand side. To undo the multiplication, I divide both sides by 86. And I need to find out what my x is. So if I take 344, 3.44, and divide it by 86, I'm going to get 0 0.04. Now, did I answer my question? So it's determine the tax rate. Rate is written as a percent because this is a tax percent. Tax is always given in a percent. So is this our final answer? No, we must change this decimal to a percent by moving the decimal two times to the right. So this is 4% which is very, very low compared to our 7 point whatever percent we have in Pueblo and Springs. Wish we could stay there. Okay, number 7 had two different slides. The first one gave the information for each of the different banks. It was for a 30-year mortgage. The question on 7a says find the number of years it will take for the total payment of bank A mortgage to equal the total payments of bank B mortgage. So again, we want to know when bank A is equal to bank B. That's what we're looking for, but we've got to set it up first. So if we look at bank A, 
Bank A is a 6.5% interest rate. That's not important to us right now. There's no points that are going to be charged to you. So depending on the bank that you use, they will take 2% of the total amount and add that to your total cost. So bank A has no points, so we don't have to be charged 2 points for that or any points for that. The monthly payments for those is $586.86 per month. Okay, that's per month. Okay. It says that there's a thousand dollars closing cost. So just to be able to close this whole thing down to sit here and to agree to that mortgage payment for 30 years, there's a thousand dollars closing cost. That's something that you have to pay on top of the thousand dollars that they're going to charge you for the ninety thousand dollar mortgage that you're going to be taking out on the house. Okay. So again, bank A is the monthly charge plus the $1,000 closing cost. Okay, Bank B is a 6% interest. Okay, And because the interest is smaller, the monthly payments are going to be less, which is cool. But this bank is going to charge you $1,800, and that's at 2%. They're going to take 2% of the $90,000, which is the $1,800. So they're going to charge you $1,800 because that's the 2% that the bank has agreed to do. Plus, again, the monthly payments of $539.60, and that is per month. Okay. This bank also has a $1,500 closing cost. So that's another uh, cost that you have to account for or have to pay for at the very end of this mortgage. Okay, so we have our two expressions. Bank A is the monthly cost plus the closing cost. Bank B is that 2%, the monthly cost, and the closing cost. Okay, so even though banks, Bank B's interest rate was 6%, which is half a percent lower than the other bank, they're adding on a lot of extra costs. But again, just a word problem. Okay, so we want to know when Bank A a and bank B are equal. So I want to write these two together and put bank A on one side and bank B on the other side. And we're trying to find out, again, what question? We want to know how many years that it's going to take for these two to be the same. But in our problem, these are talking about months. So once we get our answer, we're going to have to take months and change them to years. So it's one thing that you need to make sure that you pay attention to. It's asking for years, but we're working with months. Okay. Now, to give myself a little bit more room, I'm going to turn off the camera, rewrite some of the stuff so that I have more room to write. Okay, on the left-hand side, we see bank A. So this was the monthly the monthly payment that you had to make on the mortgage. We used X because again, this was $586.86 per month. So if I do one month, it'll be times one. If I do two months, it's times two. So that's where our variable needs to go. Plus the $100 closing cost. I rearranged these a little bit from the last video. So this is the monthly cost. It was $539.60 per month. Again, if that's times one month, times two months, so the variable needs to go there. This was the 2% they added onto the cost. And this is the closing cost, the $1,500 closing cost. Okay, So we need to work this equation out. I know it's a little bit wide for the camera. So we're going to focus on each side separately. Is the left-hand side simplified? Yes, because this is a variable, this is not. Is the right-hand simplified? This is a variable, constant, constant. So these two constants need to be added together, so that's going to be 3,300. So I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to drop this zero off right here. This zero, any zeros after a decimal are just extra placeholders. You don't really need them right now. Okay. On the left hand side, 586.86x plus 1000. Again, not doing anything different. 
okay? Left hand simplified, right hand simplified. So, any parentheses? No. But I do have x's on the left hand side and on the right hand side, so I need to move the variables to one side of the equation. This is 586, this is 539, so I would suggest moving this one first. So, subtract 539.6x from the $586. <coughs> Okay, subtract, that is a 6, it's 2, okay, so I got 47.26x plus 1,000 equals the 3,300 on the right hand side because again, this goes away. I need to move the 1,000 first, because this is what's happening first, this is what's happening second, so this needs to go first. So we minus 1,000 on both sides, and I'm left with $47.26 times X, 1,000 goes away, I'm left with 2,300 on the right hand side. I need to get the 47 away from the x. There's multiplication going on. Opposite is division. Okay, so when I divide that, I have 2300. Sorry, working with one hand here. 2300 divided by 47.26. Okay. So I get 48.6669. So I'm going to round that to that. Or you could leave it into your calculator. So again, I would leave it into your calculator, but if you're going to write it down, you can write it down like this. And this again represents months. But did I want months? No, I wanted years. So to get years, I need to divide this by 12. So leaving it straight into your calculator. When I divide that by 12, because again there's 12 months in a year, I get 4.0555 and I would round that to 4.1 years. Okay. So in 4.1 years I would be paying the same amount for bank A and for bank B, but if it takes me longer to pay a 30-year mortgage off, which again, it's a 30-year mortgage, most of us don't have that much cash to, to put on a $90,000 house, um, you would need to decide which bank would be better for you in the long run. Okay? 7B, don't forget there was a part B. So, so 7B says, if the buyer keeps the house for 30 years, which mortgage will result in a lower total cost, A or B? So, we know that A was $586.86 per month plus the $1,000 closing cost. Part B was $539.60 per month plus an extra three, $3,300 on the closing cost and plus that 2% that they, the bank took off or took put back on. So what we have to do is we need to figure out how much each is going to cost in 30 years. So 30 years is how many months? So we need to do, because the thing is, is this equation is not set up to do years. We have to do this in months because each of this is a monthly payment. So each month for 12 months in a year, we're going to do this for 30 years, so we're going to get 360 months. That means that if you're going to keep the house for 30 years, you're going to make a total of 360 payments. Or this is going to be months. Okay. Sounds like a lot, but you know, it's 30 years. So that means that I need to substitute 360 in for each one of these and work them out. And that will tell me how much I'm going to end up paying <coughs> Excuse me, at the end of 30 years. 
I promise I'm not allergic to math. So, anyways, we got to substitute 360 into our first equation. So I'm going to take the 586.86 and multiply that by 360. And that's going to give us a huge number. Okay, so that's $211,269.6. And then I need to add on a thousand to that. Okay, which will give us $212,269.60. So at the end of a 30 year mortgage, your $90,000 mortgage that you took out is really going to cost you $212,000. Well, a little bit more than $212,000. Okay. Bank B, same thing. I'm going to take the $539.60 and multiply that by 360, but then add on the $3,300 for the extra fees. Okay, and I got $194,000. Plus the $3,300 that we got for the extra fees. So $197,556. So looking at this, this is again bank A. This one's bank B. Bank B, even though they added on those extra fees, that $3,300 of extra fees, that half a percent interest difference between the two banks made a big difference. So we need to find out, it says, if the buyer, um, which mortgage will result in a lower total cost? Well, we know that Bank B will result in a lower total cost. If you even wanted to elaborate more on this, what you could do is take the two costs and subtract the two, right? And then tell me more specifically, why you chose that one. So you could sit here and say that in the end, if you chose Bank B over a 30-year period, you would be saving f over $14,000, which is a lot of money. Okay, a little bit of a geometry review in order to do the last two problems. There are four different types of angles. This notation right here we use for angle. It looks like a less than symbol, but notice how the bottom part is more flat and straight than a less than symbol. So, four different types of angles. We have a what's called a straight angle. Straight meaning that is just a straight line. But we need to think of it as a closed and then it opens all the way down back straight kind of like a recliner you recline all the way back that's 180 degrees okay if I were to go back around one more time that'd be 360 we have a right angle which forms a right angle right angle meaning that it equals 90 degrees most of the time we use this little box in the corner to signify that we're talking about a right angle okay acute is an angle that is less than 90 degrees. Okay, a cute, cute little being small, small, cute little angle. Okay, and then obtuse is an angle that is greater than 90 degrees. Again, greater than 90 degrees, but it has to be less than 180. It can't be 180 degrees because if it's 180 degrees, then we're talking about a straight line or a straight angle. Okay, the reason why these two are important because they come into play here. Okay, Supplementary angles are two lines that when you put them together form a straight line. So here angle A and angle B, when I put them together they form a straight line or a straight angle. So put them together, meaning that when I add them together I get 180 degrees. So if this one were 40, this one would have to be 140 because again they have to add up to 180 degrees. Complementary angles are two angles that when you put them together they form a right angle. 
Again, when I put them together, meaning that when I add them together, I get 90 degrees. Now, two cheesy ways that I remember how to remember the two of these is complimentary when you go to a restaurant and they comp your meal. You don't have to pay for the entire meal. They usually reduce it by a certain percent. Um, in this, I think, half. So 90 and 180 are the two different angles that you're going to be messing with when you hear complementary and supplementary angles. So you need to know between the two, which one is which. When, which, which one is 90 degrees and which one is 180 degrees. So comp, meaning they cut it, that it's less. So I would take the lesser of the two, which is the 90 degrees. Supplementary kind of reminds me of supper and usually when you eat supper you're full. So full meaning 180 degrees. You don't have to use those little tricks but they help me anyways to know which one is the two, which one is the 90 degrees and which one is the 180. Number 8 starts off by saying if angles A and B are complementary angles and angle B equals 58 degrees um, larger than A, then we need to determine the measurements of both angles A and B. Now, we don't know what angle A is, so we could say that's X. And then B says that it's 58 degrees larger, larger meaning that we're adding on so is larger than A. So that means that this is going to be X plus 58. So that's going to be either 58 plus X, X plus 58. It's the same thing because again, um, addition is commutative. Okay. So we know that A is X and we know B is 58 plus X. Where do we go from there? Well, it tells us that they're complementary. Complementary meaning that angle A and angle B have to add up to what? So again, complementary. It's either 90 or it's 180. So complementary meaning half, cutting off, discount. We're going to use 90. So angle A is X. Angle B is 58 plus X. These have to equal 90 degrees. Okay. Is my left hand side simplified? No, I need to combine my like terms. So that's 2X plus 58 equals 90. This is multiplication. This is addition. This needs to go first. So I subtract 58 from 90, get 32, divide by 2, and x equals 16. Okay, so x represents, that's angle A, so angle A equals 16 degrees, but how do I find angle B? Well, angle B is 58 plus 16 degrees, so 74 degrees. Number 9 says if angles C and D are supplementary angles and the measurement of angle C is 39 degrees greater than twice the measurement of angle D, Determine the measurements of both angle C and angle D. So again, it says that angle C and D are supplementary. Supplementary meaning what? That means that angle C plus angle D has to equal 180 degrees. Again, supplementary, full. Okay. It says the measurement of angle C is 39 degrees greater than, greater than what? Okay. Really, the 39 should go second because it says greater than, greater than what? Twice the measurement of angle D. But I don't know what angle D is, so that's where our variable comes in. I don't know what it is. Again, I'm setting up my unknowns. This is one of the first steps that you need to answer on your test. 
Okay, angle D is X. So it says twice the measurement of angle D. So that means two times X. Okay, so we have our unknown for our C, our unknown for our D. We know that these are supplementary angles, so they have to add up to 180 degrees. So I'm going to have X plus 2X plus 39 equals 180 degrees. Okay. Again, it doesn't matter what order we put these in. I could have them switch. The 2x plus 39 could be here, and then the x could be here. It doesn't matter. Is the left hand simplified? No, because I need to combine my like terms. So I get 3x plus 39 equals 180. Multiplication, addition. I've got to move this part first. Subtract 39 on both sides. I get 3x equals 141. Divide by 3 on both sides. So x equals, let's see, that goes in there, 4 and 47? Is that right? One, one. Yes. Okay, what does this represent? This represents D, so angle D equals 47 degrees. Angle C was 2 times that plus 39. So that means that angle D D was 47 degrees and angle C is 2 times that plus 39 degrees which is 133 degrees. Now if you wanted to you could have just taken what 180 and minus the 47 and that still would have given you the 133 degrees. Either way is fine. Again, make sure you check your work. 133 plus 47 should give you 180. If they do not, you messed up somewhere. You need to go back and find your mistake. Okay, number 10 has to do with rectangles. So it says that we have three rectangles. So I drew out three rectangles. Sometimes it's a lot easier to, to draw pictures than to just look at the words. It says it has a combined area so that we know that we're going to have to find area of each of these. So area of a rectangle is length times width, length times width, length times width. So we need to find the area of all three of these rectangles. But it says it has a combined area of 130 meters squared. That means combined. That means that we're going to add these together. And the total has to be 130 meters squared. It says the largest rectangle, so let's just say this one is the largest. Usually it goes from smallest to biggest. Or you could do this one. Let's do this one. The largest rectangle is twice as long as the smallest. Okay, so this one is two times as long, as large, as the smallest. But we don't know what this one is. So let's move on. It says, and the third rectangle is 10 meters squared larger than the first, the smallest. Again, it keeps both of these keep referring back to the smallest, but we don't know what the smallest is. So we are going to represent that with X. I don't know what the smallest rectangle is. But it says the largest is twice as large. So that means 2 x twice as large. Then it says that the third rectangle is 10 meters squared larger than the smallest. That's going to be x plus 10. So 10 meters larger than the first. So we pretty much have our equation. So we have x for the first one, 2x for the second one, and x plus 10 for the third. And they both are, all three of them have to add up to 130 degrees. Is our left hand side simplified? No, I need to combine like terms. There's one x here, two x's, so that makes three. Here, that makes the fourth. So I've got 4x four plus 10 
equals 130 degrees. Multiplication, addition, I have to do the addition part first. I subtract 10 on both sides. So I get 4x equals 120. Divide both sides by 4, x equals 30. That represents the smallest. So the smallest, or our first one is 30 meters squared. The second one was 2 times x, that's 2 times 30, which is 60 meters squared. And then c was x plus 10, so that's going to be 30 plus 10, which is 40 meters squared. Again, you should check your work. Does 30 plus 60 plus 40 give us 130? And the answer to that question is yes. 60 plus 40 is 100, plus 30 is 130, so this checks out.